Hey guys, uh, welcome back to that intro that I made from scratch and I'm just gonna go over it a little bit really. I realized my older works and whatnot were mostly uh, realism oriented so I wanted to go the total opposite uh, polar of stylization and anime and whatnot it seems it since <laughs> it seems to stereotype me as like some anime lord even though I don't really watch it. I, I did draw anime at one point though in high school but this time I uh, drew it in 3D essentially and learned from a graphics master, uh, this guy over here, and uh, Hiroshi Kanazawa and he had a really solid understanding of turning 3D into like 2D anime and pretty much learned under his class and I think the results of what happened was spectacular and I'm gonna try and translate this into the sister characters that I'm working on in Unreal Engine and try to grant this effect to particular story elements and areas of the game where it makes sense. Um, I think it's actually a brilliant challenge to actually just bring two different, vastly different styles together and make them work. And obviously not just throw it in like a gimmick or whatever, just trying to make sense of where it would make sense as well. And it'd be good to just expand knowledge for myself for this kind of mechanic and uh, stylization for, for the game that I'm developing. First, like pass through that uh, essential uh, pipeline or whatnot in terms of trying to get the style working is also just being able to uh, perform this this change and one thing I'm going to do is like a character reveal trailer kind of when all the characters done and do it almost like a gacha pull like in Honkai Star Rail or like Nikkei or whatever and just do a really uh, quick like five ten second slice of like character reveal like a gacha pull and make it super like all refined and whatnot and do like both styles worked into each other and see if I can do that. And if if the result looks fucking great, then then yeah, of course I'm gonna do it. So I'm really excited. I know it's a lot of work and a long time before it reaches there because I have to like create the character, then I have to design like probably like the graphical style. Obviously, I'm gonna be like looking at all these other games as reference points just to get ideas because I'm not really good in that realm. Like timings, everything, sound effects. Um, I'm trying to appeal for help, but even then, it's just like. I feel like I'm losing more time and energy just wasting trying to reach out than uh, just end up doing it myself, which feels like a lot of the time the case, but I don't know. Um, and even then, if like I had to collab with somebody, I don't even know how to describe like what I'm looking for to them, so it, it'd be wasting their time too, I guess, kind of. I, I tried like collabing with a friend um, on some music, and I had problems figuring out how to describe the music to them. I know how to describe like a scene and emotions and what's going on, the backstory, the world view to uh, what kind of tune that I want. And also like reference points of like other melodies from other games that depict the emotion that I was feeling as well as trying to land what I needed for the scene. So, and as well as timing too, like I have it all in my head. So I just need to build it out. I probably need to storyboard it a little bit too and uh, just make sure the timings and everything is uh, buildable within a time frame because that trailer should only be about like a minute or like a minute 20 seconds long and that's pretty long as well in my opinion so so it's gonna be really packed but uh, yeah so I'm just gonna go over a little brief about what happened here in this scene um, by showing all the parts of what I learned and seeing how much I can remember of it. I obviously will need to go back and review most of these things because I have a brief understanding of the concepts as well as like a strong understanding of some of the concepts that was taught to me through this guy's class. With the animation logo at the end, it's pretty much just a single texture of some words and a procedural noise being animated from randomness to none, essentially. So the image is scattered essentially by procedural noise and then I remove the randomness and it becomes the texture again. And that's basically uh, where the colors and were just like driven against the camera and the frame rate. And the end shot was just orthographically facing the camera. So it looks like it's a 2D image, even though it's in a 3D environment. And then essentially rendered out and basically you get this. So from one to a hundred, this changes colors and then it turns into my alias essentially. The fairly simple um, is basically just a key driver on this mix node here. Um, Voronoi texture against the against the uh, into the texture here, so it mixes like from randomness into none, and it's mapped over here, basically with an expression of the frames divided by 100. If I wanted it faster or slower, I change that division to like a thousand or just ten. But this is uh, this worked it well enough for what I needed. 
Um, it could be any division number anyways, just for timing's sake. You can do math against like 24 FPS for film or like 30 FPS or 60 FPS for more of like an in-game cutscene or something like that or whatever, um, whichever works best. So this giant orb uh, at the end was, was actually pretty interesting as well to create. It's basically six pieces of just noise like stretched out over a sphere. Uh, the sphere was duplicated a few times and then just kind of uh, expanded outwards, rotated a little bit. Um, basically, this is what it looks like. It really is just a sphere. Uh, simple, pr it's pretty simple when you're just like staring at it, but then when put together, it looks kind of complicated, which is a pretty neat effect because this could be like a spirit bomb from like Dragon Ball Z or whatnot. But um, it's, it's, I probably have to review a bit of these areas here too because just setting this up was actually a little overwhelming. Um, I have the gist of the standing he understanding here. They're mostly simple and to do with uh, mapping essentially on the procedural noise textures here at the bottom. The main takeaway here was basically the uh, key drivers that were mapped to in order to allow it to just automate and move throughout any kind of scene that it gets a, uh, appended into or, or brought into essentially. And what that allowed was that this, this will always rotate in multiple different ways. So each one of these had its own expression after doing one of them. So once you did one of them, you basically just uh, offset and duplicate and create more materials for each one. So it looks like they're all offset and looks pretty random. And because it's just driven by an operator based on the frame rate, all of this will always be like randomized to some degree and some digits just had to be changed essentially between each one. And just fine tweaking it and adjusting and making sure the colors uh, made sense and really showcase the differences between each one. So this is all just like a procedural noise again of some Musgrave textures and Voronoi textures mixed together in a multiply and then as well like just messing around with their bloom and emission rates to get this. Then we mix the two shades together and we also blend their like layer weights together because if you crank this up things could get like invisible or like not visible but if you want it somewhat faded off then you want to play around with that. But each one is essentially different, they have their own, and it pretty much all follows the same thing after you do one. The aura was the only one that required like a little bit more because it's not like flat lines, and uh, it's more of like a like a burst. This was also used at the rocket's back at the end too, to, to show sort of like a flamey aura around the uh, propulsion of the engine. All right, so this one here was actually really interesting, was creating essentially uh, lightning. Um, this is again just a simple piece of geometry and just approaching this was was very unique in how this was done due to the lessons I learned here and it's basically just displacement maps across the XYZ axis that you can see here. Um, it's, it's essentially driven by an invisible axis element which is this here. So this, this pretty much like scrolls the lightning for the most part. Uh, the other two are driven by the uh, frame rates again so that it's automated in any scene that it goes into. Um, same with the uh, flame was also done similarly in the same fashion. This is essentially the flame on the back of the uh, of the uh, thing. So this is what it looks like when rendering's on instead of just a grayscale. So if you move this, it's pretty much just fire that looks like it's in 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 motion essentially. You can slow it down, speed it up depending on whatever you feel like or whatnot. And same with this bottom one to actually change like the aiming of this flame too. So this this pretty much will like change which way the fire should go. But that's also driven um, by, again, more uh, just like uh, key driven by the frame rate. Um, and, but for lightning here, uh, it's a little bit different since uh, the, f the lightning needs to like grow. But that's again solved by just scaling. So if you scale it up and down, it just looks like a lightning bolt blast off essentially. And while that's, while that's also growing in scale, this is also moving too, right? So it looks like a shock bolt essentially. But at the bottom line, it's really just a simple piece of geometry. Um, this is kind of what it looks like when I go into edit mode, and it's really small right now. But if I ex expand it, it's just a it's just a spline of vertex of ver vertices, and uh, I just gave it a skin modifier, and then it gave it some width essentially, and then just displacing it with some procedural like. Uh, textures of clouds I think was it clouds yeah it's just clouds and and yeah and then we have like simple simulated lightning essentially is what that happens so this was also on the back of the rocket as well as in the end before like my alias showed up so it's another small piece of the puzzle 
Uh, essentially, Flames was the same deal here. So to get the stylized flame, it was also just following the same concepts with like the giant orb as well. Um, most of the textures and coloring and mappings and whatnot were very similar to that of the giant orbs. Uh, also taught through, all, all of this is taught through that person's lesson. I'm just trying to go over it to make sure I understand what I did as well within this video. So it's actually a nice review for me as well to do this and sharing this. Um, and yeah, this this essentially is just this, this is just a cylinder as well with like a cutoff open top at the, over here. If I wanted to adjust the flame size, which is what I did within, it was just like some proportional editing of like the vertices around if I wanted to make this fatter or like the flame wider. I would just do this or like turn on proportional editing and like enlarge this. Um, I could add like more verts up here and just like scale these up and whatnot. And then you could essentially really get uh, this flame looking much bigger and like a cone that looks more realistic. So if I had to like rotate this object to its side, this is what it would look like. But the only other problem is that the, uh, the control of the fire aim should be over here. So it actually looks more natural and then this is essentially like when when the thing's moving on the rocket because the rocket will drive this and these elements will move together with it thus simulating the motion of flame without needing to keyframe anything and this is always going if i wanted to turn it off i would just scale this down essentially into the rocket's like engine and then just uh do an opacity uh blend disappearance of it and that's the thruster gone essentially so that's that's how that's would play if I actually uh, made a longer scene, but I actually wanted to just make the scene and get it out there so that uh, people had something to see. The explosion at the end was actually quite a bit to put together. It was the most amount of concepts put together and the most impactful and expressive explosions are a lot of work and a lot of detail when put together. Um, I've always had struggles building proper explosions or even approaching it in older work. It was really difficult, even, even between two ideas of like, a fireball explosion and like an explosion explosion like a fireball explosion realistically if you think about it a fireball is just a ball of flame and when it hits something like a wall it should actually just disperse there shouldn't actually really be like a real explosion um it's just like a bunch of games you know you throw an actual ball of fire it should actually just like wisp out and like if it hits a wall it would just spread like a like a flat but it's much cooler in video games when you see like a giant ball of fire and it hits something and it just explodes and you see like debris flying everywhere. And it's way more impactful and memorable, obviously in that sense, than just like if it actually was real, very realistic, a ball of fire would really just like, like fizz out afterwards. It wouldn't really make like an explosion per se. That's just uh, glorified in movies and games, but it works much better that way. So in this, in this, uh, just building this out and learning from this guy, I was also thinking about like, what kind of explosion is this, right? How do I make it feel real as well? Cause there's no sound design or anything in the course. It was mostly just VFX and learning how to do uh, visual effects. So that's just something that I kept in mind as I was like learning it. And it had the least amount of visibility essentially in the scene and gave it the most adrenaline uh, for the shot, in my opinion. It's like the most amount of like, like what, what, made the scene like have some form of purpose because without it if i take the explosions out of the scene the rocket is just essentially just flying through some through some corridor essentially and nothing was really going on but with the explosions there's at least the imagination narrative at that it's under attack by something off screen or it's just like you know it's sailing through and dodging it has like a purpose to stay alive and whatnot just just from the explosions alone you remove that one element and all of a sudden the narrative's just gone from the scene explosion work here is fascinating as to me as it gave like a good stepping stone to plan for like a calamity event that i was essentially designing for the two characters that i was working on um just even working on the sparks here was just three little simple pieces of geometry with like a glowing uh shader essentially on it and just uh seeing how it worked with some physics and turbulence forces at first uh, some of this was shown on stream um, to some viewers when I was just streaming some small bits of like games and stuff and showing what I was doing in the background. The explosion like creation here essentially I do need more uh, review in this section alone because there was a lot of different components just to really refine and hone in an explosion effect. Not only did you did I have to make clouds, smoke clouds, uh, smoke lines, to showcase like you know debris flying off um debris pieces actually blowing up and coming off the spot there's also like sparks to showcase like you know uh, something that caused the fire and impulse of the explosion 
and then there was also like just destroying my machine by cranking up like the amount of intersecting geometry pieces to actually simulate the clouds then it's also making all the colors and also all the effects and making sure even like the color scheme looks correct in the scene so that it matches like the color effects and doesn't really fade into the background or pop out too hard as well um as well as in the scene itself that short 15 second clip it was also to showcase it in mid distance uh proximity like right up in the face and just one right in the middle to really drive like three different points of interest to to examine essentially what i could do with this um so i discovered a lot essentially with that small clip and i could i could definitely make it a lot longer but <laughs> That was good enough before uh, people's attention spans probably started disappearing or whatnot. So over here, it was just uh, figuring out this like small scene of like debris particles here, and basically like this is just dry. Dri this is just like plain turbulence forces, and just having a look at what it would look like if this was just uh, put on this like two D two D silhouette. So if, if this was just being played, and if I guess if this was darker, uh, you'd probably be able to see it much better. Maybe just turn it down a little bit but this is essentially what it looks like like if i did like a cutscene like this and just some narration over uh, and just like these particles flying around it probably go something like oh dude. Two sisters just like on through an adventure. yeah obviously not with that kind of lame voice acting but yeah <laughs> and that was just like the beginning of like taking figure out how to make sparks then it was also doing a blast of particles like this um, off of a object, just a sphere, essentially, just an icosphere or whatnot. Applying the same uh, effects of like turbulence. I was, this was, I think, planning to try and do something for for the rocket thruster when it took off near the end, but I don't think I really incorporated it. But I think this would have been cool if it just blasted this particles off before it left the scene. Um, but yeah, this is, this could also work as an aura around a character too, depending on how the turbulence forces was adjusted on this so this was essentially like these these forces here with a turbulence field around it and whatnot and then the explosion sparks which is uh this is uh explosion sparks here it's just based off of like uh, again a sphere that's been broken into pieces and they become the emitter but then these emitters are essentially hidden um in the scene and eventually these are just incorporated in at the same time where the explosions occur. And then it was just working like animation timings and placing them properly like with the explosions. And eventually once all the things are put together, then there's essentially a set of items put together that essentially equals explosion in the scene. So this was just again, like some physics and just drop off. And there, there are just all these little spheres with like a glow effect on them, which is this big sphere here. So it's just emitting like thousands of these little little spheres in that area. So obviously this all this also can't be too dense in geometry. Otherwise, you're just blasting like like thousands of geo, <laughs> which isn't too bad if it's just since it's just an instance of it. So they're just copies. They're not actually like recreating like a new object in the space. It's just like referencing this one thing. So that makes it somewhat lighter. All right, so the next part was actually getting physics to work, and I pretty much downloaded the Mixamo bot just for something to break, I guess. I didn't really have any simplex character to just smash. You know, my characters are complex and way too many polygons and whatnot. Um, so this was actually used, utilizing the Cell Fracture plugin within Blender itself and enabling that, and pretty much putting it into a physics volume and breaking up each of these pieces. Um, cell fracturing, I had to actually separate this uh, model out into separate parts. Um, it doesn't really work too well in detecting which parts to break into pieces when you uh, have like a joined object or whatever. So if you have like a bunch of pieces and whatnot that are like, like this, this sphere here and this arm is clearly disconnected with this ball joint here. So it wouldn't detect this break really well if you had to shatter this into objects. And pretty much uh, it was just learning to break things uh, with physics really it was just uh throwing throwing like a cylinder through this thing and blowing it up also doing it on a cube essentially so this this cube is broken into pieces uh, and then just moving a, a volume to essentially blow it up so this is just this is just simulating like its explosion afterwards it's just baking that in and once you bake it in essentially or like you're okay with like the pieces 
where they're flying. Uh, it's just positioning it in the scene afterwards. Uh, relatively simple and then assigning it a similar uh, style shader or color shader that was like in the orbs in the previous bits uh, just to make sure the theme looks consistent and not like a realistic like rock texture as well as like a bevel a little bit of a bevel to give it that uh, cell shaded outline look so this is a scene where uh, within the lesson it was like just showcasing how to use these um, keyframes and whatnot and just moving it through the object and causing this to explode and then essentially when the thing hits and explodes there's also a particle emitter that emits like a ton of little fragments of those uh, cubes as well just to show like dust debris of to really drive like the explosive effect going on here and just trying to look at where the direction of the items are going uh, if I scrub it too fast the thing can't calculate because I didn't really bake these in so if I actually just played this and let it play you would just see this like get blasted off looks pretty good in my opinion um, and then it was just doing this with a cube as well later on and just having those pieces fly everywhere. But the robot here was a, a nice test to just like learn the fracturing system as well as like how to set this up. And then just applying it to the cube really because I don't need something that complex for the scene. So a cube did the trick essentially. And just essentially just moving it below the ground at where the explosion happens because all the objects fly up and just not having it collide with any floor geometry so that it pierces and it'll just look like the simulated effect of explosive particles. It was also like making the speed lines which was just some textures as well it's just a uh, pattern of like procedural noise with some ramp and then it's uh distortion and roughness was just played around with for for these colors for this first pattern say i wanted this more thin and thick or whatever you can just like change the uh, position of these things here so it can be thinner or you can thick or light whichever uh, you can go the other way too and just make these like even like like glowier like thick concentrated like confident lines rather than thin ones or you can reverse it entirely and just go have it like a giant light beam with like a few bits and pieces like cut out of it uh depends on what you want really and same with like the roughness you can make it more scraggly if you want uh and color change or if you wanted the glow brighter you just crank this up like crazy but uh then, and then you just put keyframes on it to draw motion essentially while it's while it's moving Another one was this wavy pattern. Uh, this was just to figure out how high you could get with psychedelics, I suppose. Uh, this one is the star effects. So you can go like Dragon Ball Z mode, like the 1990s uh, sparkling intro. Um, this is also for like some stars in the sky as well. Uh, this was the aura and the flames for the sphere and the back of the, f the thing. This was just a flame texture just to work around how it could be in motion. Um, you can actually move and change these if you want, uh, as well as like this. Uh, this if I can only select, if I could only select this and move it down. Is this the wrong? I think I'm selecting the wrong wrong material here. Oh, there we go. Sorry, that was the wrong material. So yeah, you can change this into its intensity depending on where it is. Or you could actually just animate these as well to draw more motion, same with its intensity. Could be a solar flare, you, you know, all sorts of things. You can have many very many different expressions based on this simple setup that I learned from this guy. And this is sort of treated like like Photoshop like blending layers to sort of put these two things together and just blend all these textures together. There's no actual real file dependency here. This is all within Blender. Which is actually really good because I want to translate this kind of concept into my Unreal Engine 5 development so that there's less file dependency on the project itself so that there's a lot of procedural uh, modular components that can be used all over the game, leaving it very optimized and not having to bloat like a larger size of the game is what I want to keep intact. So so that way the project itself can remain like super high quality elsewhere in other departments that require more resources and also be more accessible to people who don't have a strong computer because if i'm not building with that in mind then uh very few people are going to be able to experience the story that i'm trying to create so creating the entire world was actually quite challenging this is one part i actually need to review a bit more I remember it started off like fairly simple and then uh, the elements got duplicated and compounded and layered on top of each other and then it suddenly became exponentially complex very quickly. But when you look at it at the micro level rather than the macro level, it was actually fairly simple. 
So this is one part of like the sky and the world. This is essentially like environmental settings that I had to, I have to review this because this was actually a little bit overwhelming for me. Um, it might be simple to others, but essentially the stars in the sky are just generated by like noise once again, procedural noise. And that's essentially this bottom section here of just, uh, well, it's one of these. And then it was duplicated four times essentially, or three times to make three clones of itself. So you have like this starry looking sky here. But the thing is that this isn't really like, uh, this is like one texture image reliance as well. That sun isn't actually really there or this light source here. This is just part of the picture. It's an HDRI, a high, di high dynamic range image um, that can be found on like sites like Polyhaven or whatnot. It's actually just a shot of a park um, that's offset from the floor and the floor is like down there somewhere. If you look closely at like some of the lower areas here, you'll notice that that's like a that's like a house in the background over here and like a like a parkway bench or whatnot but this is just like really exposing like what's going on um but you know when you come back up to about here where the monkey head is uh this is where the scene sort of takes place right and there's also a floor that blocks all where the uh ground here is so essentially you'll never see that bottom part so it looks like you're out in like outer space and then the colors is this ramp here to really make it feel like you're in space, psychedelic space or whatever, or like those anime shows uh, was why I chose these colors. Uh, these colors really sort of like reminded me of like old school anime and whatnot, like Evangelion or whatnot, or like other, other old animes. They used like these kinds of color schemes that were really, really vibrant and exaggerated and really cross polar against one another to drive this uh, I don't know, whatever emotion they're trying to drive. And like Sailor Moon, for instance, is probably a good example too. So uh, people won't really be seeing the scene like directly to the top. But even then, I think it looks like pretty mesmerizing um, given that this is this is what it looks like. So, and they, these can all be adjusted too. Like I can actually just make all the stars bigger or smaller just with some sliders here and just really work out if I actually want them that big or that small or whatnot. So just go all the way down here. And like, if I wanted these bigger, you just drag this like, oh shit. And then, uh, yeah, and then I'll adjust. But same with the yellow, like I want it more bright. If there's too many, you go like lower down the scale or whatnot. It's just like too many. And you just can really adjust like a lot of them. So that's uh, essentially building the, the, this giant sun and moon as well was a little bit tricky. This part I, I need to review for sure because uh, adjusting the moon and the sun in its position here was really awkward in terms of concept and understanding. The other parts of the elements, like a vast majority, like 9%, 90% of this world here was actually fairly simple. But these two elements here to have them be in the right spot was a little bit tricky for the final scene because I had to mess around with its position and mapping and whatnot. So there was a lot of adjusting of these uh, mapping digits here and its exposure and then its color and then also seeing if I could get the clouds to show up in front of the transparent like giant purple moon like object here was a little bit weird too because it also operated a little bit differently in the shader mix towards its output and yeah this is all just like one material so if you look at it just overall wise it looks really complicated but uh the concepts i was taught was like simple things with a bunch of layers put on top and i want to carry that forward in like a lot of whatever i'm building Okay, so building the city for the scene of the uh, the rocket to fly through was actually pretty interesting too. Um, this looks pretty crazy, but this was not um, placed manually except for these large buildings here. These large buildings were the only thing that were manually placed, but well, you're really looking at a collection of like three cubes and just a bunch of extrusions on those cubes to make it look like structures and just trying to get an overall grasp of a feel for an environment quickly because there wasn't really time to just sit down and build a full detailed city and whatnot. So I tried to emulate best as could to sort of like emulate this focus. And I believe that most of the focus on the scene would have been on the rocket and the explosions anyways. Uh, so the rocket would uh, skim past a lot of the city and make it look like it's in a futuristic setting. Um, this is essentially just using one texture that's rotated around um, the entire uh, splay of cities here this was a uh, procedurally generated in rng with geometry nodes that existed within blender i also believe unreal engine 5.2 will have a similar system that can utilize similar concepts like this so 
Um, I think like level building will be quite a bit easier and controlling this was also really interesting too because it was, um, this is essentially a plane, uh, except I don't really know how to select it right now. Yeah, so this is a plane actually. So if I select all this, you'll notice this is the underlying object. It's a plane and I s it's been subdivided a number of times just for vert vertex points or vertices. And what happens here is essentially that uh, each vertice controls like a grouping of spawn of X buildings in a collection, a collection of three structures. So each there's like three, three building collections of cubes and essentially it'll choose each vertex here, whether or not to spawn. And the other thing was like, it was weight painted in order to showcase like which areas should spawn a cer certain building or not. And this blue area that's painted to zero doesn't spawn any of these purple buildings. So that was to control like some sort of order within the randomness. And that way the plane, the rocket would fly through that area without having to collide with an object or needing to dodge an object. So I could actually have a better rough sketch of an animation to how it was going to move through that trajectory and that uh, traversal of this path without having to like constantly configure the randomization until there was a configuration where there was like no buildings in the middle, which would be really hard to do because it's going to randomize equally across. So very likely there would always be a structure in the way. And then if I had to change the scene entirely, I had to reconfigure it. So this was a good way to actually add some order into the chaos, which I thought was interesting. The other thing was also making sure um, the buildings rotated like 90 degrees was actually doing some math and having them uniformly rotate 90, degree, 90 degrees because at first they would just um, they would just like randomly like rotate however they wanted. But then it was affixed to uh, a zero to three integer. So one, two, three, four, four, four different segments or four different numbers. And then that's multiplied into rotation radians of pi divided by two. So that essentially translates to about like 1.57 or something like that. And you just multiply that against their z axis vector so that essentially when they are looking uh that into that number on the z axis it'll rotate like in 90 degree fashion by rng so that the texture on all the buildings which is the same texture as the floor it's all uh looking different rather than uniform because if they were all uniform it, the scene wouldn't look as uh developed it would just look like it's just some kind of static like structure where everything was uniform and only some rotations were different. So this was a good way to really uh, change the randomness in the scene to all looking organic, essentially. So for the rocket here, it's uh, just like simple shapes as well too, but uh, it's it utilizes similar concepts of the materials. But um, one thing for this like nice thick outline of black, I uh, just want to quickly go through that one here is the is essentially just the uh, material. Um, it's like a it's a modifier of solidify, but another way to do this is actually just adding a bevel too. You can do do it with a bevel. This is what I ended up doing in the scene itself, and just um, within the bevel, you have to give it like uh, a shading material, a uh, material index essentially. So I had to give it like a, a rocket line essentially, which is this, and you you switch. The modifier to that index which is three on that negative one means it's just null like there it's not using anything but essentially you can make the line adjustable more than solidify i think solidify was a little weird also when when you're using either one of these uh make sure one of the things i ran into was that one of these areas wasn't being highlighted because the uh faces was uh backwards uh, so it was like the normals here if you flip it um it's essentially gone because this thing's facing inside out and I'm not too familiar with Blender yet, how to see back face calling, but that's pretty much what's going on. So if you actually just flip it again, or make sure they're all flipped one way, uh, there's another way to view which way the normals are pointing out on the face, which is which way is front and which way is back. That's what normals are. And, uh, or at least normal direction. Nor normals itself is like bump mapping essentially, but yeah, that's just to see which way is facing out. But if it's facing outwards, then you should get this outline. If it's facing inwards, it's probably on the other side, which is inside when I go in here, but uh, obviously people won't see that. So you wanna flip it and make sure all the all the faces are facing outside for the external parts. That way you'll get this nice outline that works in any angle and look 
uh, essentially like like stylized. Okay, and here is the scene, and this is essentially what was going on in the uh, in the entire like 15 second clip. It was uh, first starting off with just bringing in the city, extending the the ground outward so that there's a bit of more of a path on that plane. So this can be extended either like in either direction of X or Y in case I needed the city to be bigger, but this was uh, enough to be necessary. And then uh, also putting in like the orb, so bringing that in. It was basically just appending all the little bits and pieces into this one large scene. Um, the motion graphic at the end, I changed a little bit and added like this wave texture and this sort of like radio like wave thing that eventually turned into a noise uh, re recombination of the texture into my name just so that it looked a little bit different and pretty cool. Um, then the explosions and the buildings were placed man some of these large yellow buildings were placed manually just to break up the scene in the background a little bit depending on which way I wanted the scene to fly. A bunch of uh, empty spheres were used as placements for the explosions just so that I know where the trajectory of this rocket was going. So this rocket's like flying through here and then it's walking through over here and then you see that first explosion and it blows up. Um, this was before I actually brought the explosions in and then, then the second one like over here which was like inside the camera almost just to really bring it close to the camera and eventually the last one is around this last building here. This one was actually manually this building here is manually placed, so it had something to maneuver around, and I put the explosion in front of it here, just so that it's like being shielded by the rocket here, and just timing the explosions to make sure they come out at that right time. So that's essentially how it's going on here. And then it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of adjustment as well too. The initial sketch wasn't this refined on the rocket's movements, and then camera shake was also added in within the scene. It wasn't added in post. Uh, because I think it's just far more accurate for the camera to react to the to what's happening within the scene rather than post because the post would be a rendered frame and whereas camera shake within on an object here is much more accurate to when the explosions are happening like I know where it's happening on the frame but uh, the shake would probably be a little bit different on an object where whereas compared to it being on post on post it's like what if I had to change the shake on post it would be a lot harder to time as well as like blend in and out as to where the explosions are disappearing so those little subtle details were really important to really hone in the explosion effects and as it gets closer to the end essentially it was also just making sure that the rocket just went for far enough into the distance um to get the scene complete essentially it kind of just stops like out there in the end but you don't really see it because this is the camera view and it just looks like a star, so it's not really noticeable. It just kind of sits there. So this is essentially what the whole scene looks like. And then as uh, there's like some even like more minute details of like compositing in these frames, in particular, just to see uh, essentially where where the explosion took place. So where the explosion took place. Uh, sometimes the oh shit. So say for instance at around like this frame here, uh, just before the explosion, I put a marker here because the explosion occurs right there and I wanted this frame when it rendered out to have like a blue filter essentially. Um, just don't remember how to get the, also I don't know where all the nodes went. Oh here they are. That was weird. So when I got to this point here um, at the 36 mark uh, there was like a blue overlay here and Okay, sorry, I had to like render an image there for this to show up. So basically, um, yeah, when it got to this frame, I wanted like something blue to happen here, which is the signal of an explosion going off. So while it looks, you can view it easily in this in this video here, but within the scene, it happens almost like 
in less than a second essentially and it fades off very quickly to really signify the explosion so essentially this this renders and bleeds off per frame into the scene and then uh essentially when the explosion is cleared it's already gone somewhere by about here because this is where the keyframes are that just goes all the way about to here and then it happens again somewhere around here where the second explosion happens and then it clears off again and same thing at like the third explosion i changed the timing a little bit to be a bit faster since it's a little bit further away from the camera i should have probably made the second one a lot longer since it was so much closer to the cameras to really drive the effect in and it was actually trying to time this as well with the uh, scene here because this is where this one starts the second blue like filter to showcase uh, the income of an explosion occurs like somewhere right about here. So because by about this frame here, this explosion is pretty much in your face and it's kind of gone. And then by over here, it clears out and all the debris is like flying around. And it's a little bit harder to view the scene this way because I'm only scrubbing through it like in slow-mo frame by frame. So I get to see all the particles and stuff flying away. But within like regular viewing speeds, like these things all happen within like less than a second because this whole scene is like 15 seconds long. That's one of the things I should have kept in mind when I was doing this. But overall, I think the result was still really sick. And this whole scene is adjustable and recreatable in any ways. And I can create a much longer scene anyways. Um, but I do want to get uh, moving on because I was like so psychologically blocked that I meant to get this out last week. And I just didn't. This was released on like... The beginning of may like the second day of may was when i posted it to like other socials just to showcase and shared with friends but then i wanted to do this work breakdown for my youtube channel here just to showcase what i did and also as a little piece of memory for myself later when i come back in the future to review this for myself as well so i was just sharing through what's going through my head here and what i'm like trying to figure out and the camera work here was could be improved at this part it's just that when i was viewing it slowly it looked pretty cool and then I was like oh wait this actually happens really fast <laughs> and on the result it just pretty much one one or two seconds and it just zooms back into the rocket really quickly and then just adding sound effects and whatnot at the end to really just hone the whole experience together because all of this is done without sound it, the sound was added in afterwards in DaVinci Resolve when I was editing it afterwards to really drive all of this home like the lightning shots the rocket uh, firing off and just even the music was like from Epidemic Sound that I got a personal license for. And that's essentially what, what we have here. So overall, that's pretty much like everything put together. And then there's this one last part here I forgot to include, which is just the explosions. It's just a bunch of spheres actually, just um, essentially cross intersecting with each other. Um, because it's doing that, it's actually incredibly expensive too because of all the intersections. And it was, it's actually lagging my computer quite hard. And as well in the scene in that previous last bit there, um, when I was scrubbing through the timeline while recording this as well too, the, uh, the frame rate on my workspace was like 5 FPS. So I'm looking at it like a slideshow, but the result is running at 24 FPS or 30 FPS or 60 FPS, whichever format I rendered it out on for particular platforms. And I was just doing this all for practice essentially on... Uh, trying to just like reinforce like a habit and a pipeline of knowledge for myself to create cinematics which is what I need for the game and the story later on so all of this is towards all that essentially and I have troubles describing and detailing most of it and it could be very long-winded or boring to a lot of people or something or it could just be very hard to describe people who like I there's no short way to describe most of it anyways but uh, yeah, this is just like a bunch of circles like constantly rotating and uh, intersecting with one another. And essentially because it was so expensive, this had to be rendered out as like a pre-rendered animation with Alembics, which was similar to my character's uh, hair file format that goes into Unreal, which is also Alembics. But this is actually like how Alembics are actually used. It's sort of like pre-baked -pre like animation frames of like an object, which is which is like a real use case for this whereas like alembics for hair is i think is fairly brand new or like untraditional because most people use hair cards because it's just cheaper and having alembics and grooms or whatever is actually far more expensive but i think that stuff is getting easier and easier and better and better and more optimized for actual real-time use but for cinematics it works really well since cinematics you just need to get the shots in 
and just render them out and fire it out as many as you can and then adjust afterwards essentially. Uh, usually it's the render times that start going really really high for an actual good shot. So this is essentially what this looks like with the materials on and uh, this and then these colors are to be adjusted later on. So when the explosions happen we're essentially looking at a scale upwards and then it's just in motion like this and just rotate it a uh, number of times so that it doesn't look so uniform as well in the shot. And then you had to add all those little bits and pieces that I was describing about earlier. So this is part, this is a big portion of the explosion. And this can also be dissipated because once it gets to this big part and these clouds like get to here and the color starts dying off and turning into just dark smoke, um, just like, you know, the force, the shockwave force is essentially dissipating when an explosion happens. And so you turn all the other colors off and animate those essentially. And then you pre-render this object out and place it in the appropriate areas that you need with the physics of the debris, the sparks, the smoke lines uh, that's attached to a Bezier curve, which is just under a simple shader. Um, could actually add like the lightning sparks in it too if I really want to go overboard. So it looks like an EMP burst bomb cycle or something in the scene. And that's essentially what this uh, turns into. This is again using a, a bunch of shaders, but if I isolate this object alone, this is essentially what it looks like. It's just a sphere. Um, if it will let me, unless this is just uh, oh, this is this is baked out. Whoops, sorry. Maybe not these. Uh, so let me just uh, open this one here. Okay, so this this is essentially what the object really is isolated. Um, this is one sphere. And it's just pretty much like a ton of modifiers to just, it's, it's like a mesh sequence. Is it a mesh sequence? No, this is this is also rendered out, I believe. It was just a ton of spheres, just like, like cross. Uh, this one's more easily seen. So yeah, you can see these tons of spheres here that are just sort of like, melded and whatnot and oh these are the rendered out. okay this is the workspace one so yeah it was a ton of modifiers of like of like displacements and vertex groups and then pushing it out this was really complicated for me i have to actually re rewind and review what what happened here in the lessons as well as like what i did um but yeah it's a single sphere here with a ton of different subdivisions smoothness mass displacements look at all these displacements like adding like weights as well randomly into like groups and it turns into essentially what you saw as an explosion so this part here was uh quite a bit complicated that i don't even fully understand what happened here i just followed the steps but i have an idea of like what went through to create the explosion as an overall concept so it's just this particular smoke cloud part that's actually kind of troubling and hard to grasp and requires review for myself Anyways, that's the end of this video. So thanks so much for watching. I know it was quite long. Um, I hope you stay tuned all the way here and hopefully you'll see different updates uh, in terms of the project and game afterwards. I'll probably mess around more with the scene later in future days just to review what I learned, what to go through and see if I can create another short uh, for June or like July. And I think the course was supposed to be like 1.5 months long, but I did this in like two weeks because I was doing it like eight to 10 hours a day, just learning through the lessons. Um, each of the lectures was like 40 to 45 minutes long. And there was a lot of rewind. Like it might sound short, but a lot of the times it was just going backwards, like 10 seconds, 10 seconds, or like a minute back, repeating, rinse and repeating, and just keep staring at it. And I was just grinding it like a real raid for, for like two weeks straight, just to get it all done. Cause I didn't want to have another course that I bought and didn't do and then uh, I have another course on my checklist to complete which is uh, game development and I was halfway through that before I jumped into this because I wanted to learn a different VFX style just so that I had range in terms of like talents and skill of what I was building so that I have like realism knowledge and now I have uh, stylized knowledge as well too so I can have both realms and play around with both of them and just create all of them and that's essentially it so it was a lot of work. I think the result was spectacular and uh, adding the sounds and also doing all this adjustment on the animations and everything too and the curves and offsetting all this craziness was uh, was pretty was pretty fun. So 
um, just even like camera shake, like camera shake is literal noise. Is no everything is noise. You just put noise everywhere, and uh, yeah, that's it. So <laughs> thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.